Hey everyone, welcome back once again to the Hot Takes Podcast, where we are always humble, open, and transparent, and somebody I've been wanting to get on here for so, so long. Finally got a hold of her, Miss Julia Armet. How are you doing, Julia? Lawrence, I am so pumped for this podcast. I'm hanging out here in Cape Cod, and I've had a productive week, so I feel like there's a lot that we can discuss, and yeah. how about you? What's been going on? Oh, same here. I just started the PhD this week, organizational leadership. I'm super pumped around that. But I got something that I'm going to toss over to you because I know you're a super intentional and strategy driven person. And it's all around. Are we working on the right work? Wow. Well, first off, congrats on the PhD. It's huge. <laughs> I feel like now that you have that commitment in your life, working mm -hmm. on the right work is going to be something that you bring more intention to. And what's the right work anyway? Of course, we're gonna get into that, but Definitely. when it comes to your business and the goals, mm -hmm. for you, what does right work mean to you? Right work means applying energy to the things that are going to move me forward towards success and getting really clear around, like you said, I have my PhD. And so do, have I set aside time to be excellent in this process because this isn't just another degree for me this is a life work that i am pursuing and so just doing something for the sake of doing something i don't have time for literally i don't have time for and so that necessitates me setting aside time to be clear and actually evaluating my time and holding space to make sure that i'm being honest with myself if I'm wasting time or if it is helping me move forward. Yeah. Intentionality around time is a topic that I bring up a lot, especially when it comes to high conscious leaders. Mm -hmm. So much of our time can be just in the creative process. And next thing you know, the whole day passes. And so what I share with the people who I partner with is the separation between productive time and then creative time. And especially when you are balancing strategy and then balancing the actual service that you provide, I think it's really essential that you look at your week and then you look at your month and from the higher level goals, you can then break it down on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. How, so people who, cause strategy is, I think one of those words that is becoming uh, overused uh, in our society. What does prioritizing and then, strategizing around that look like for you? So it starts with the visioning, actually. I feel mm -hmm. like when you are in your space of just looking at the future and saying, what does the three months ahead look like? How do I want to feel in that? What do I see myself investing my time and energy into? And then just knowing what that vision is. And so mm -hmm. when it comes to social initiatives, when it comes to programs, somebody like you who does connect the dots, somebody like me who does the higher playbook collective. It's like, I see three months ahead and I recognize just the scope at which I'm going to be serving. And I say, well, how can I create the growth of that mastermind? Yeah. So then it starts with, okay, what does the week look like? Okay. What does the day look like? And so in the prioritization, it's a matter of just getting very clear. What are the types of actions that will then go hand in hand with people saying yes to joining a community? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure your actions and my actions are quite similar, but mm -hmm. I'm going to toss it over to you and say <laughs> what three actions would be and yeah. then I'll what three actions would be for me. Yeah. So three actions for me are one uh, from my HR background. If it's not written, it's not real. And so to your point of visioning, uh, I love uh, a motto of one of the organizations I'm a part of, uh, what they see they will be. And so envisioning, you have, there's a thing and there's athletes and everybody else, if you see yourself successful, if you see yourself completing a task, then you will move in that direction. But also what's written is real. And so you can track it. And so that's an action that I take. And then you give yourself those measurements and those marks, those milestones throughout your day, throughout your week to actually track progress. Uh, because that's a way um, I do check in during my day. And it gives me a way to say you're off track. You're, you're off target, you need to get back on target. And also in that I give myself grace, 
was I actually scheduled and did the right work get put on the to-do list for that day? And so it's just a constant reframe and a constant check-in, the actions that I take to keep me focused, to keep me on target. And so that's, that's all in my three. Incredible. It's almost like core actions, just Definitely. getting very clear on core actions or even core principles. Mm -hmm. And for me, core actions are aligned with the values. So mm -hmm. if the first mm -hmm. core action is connect. How did I connect today? How can I connect today? What would be a new way to connect today? Get that accomplished. Boom. Yep. Next one, inspire. Did I inspire today? Mm. How did I inspire today? How could I inspire more today? Mm. And it's then the third one, the accountability to inviting people into the tribe. I know that when I receive invitations from people, especially when it's an invitation from somebody who I admire, it's almost like joining a party. And <laughs> I honestly sometimes feel like a little bit, um, not apologetic, but more like, oh, wow, like, what am I doing not inviting? Where if I spend a day and I haven't invited anyone new into a group, I'll then recognize I'm preventing somebody from joining a party that they would really benefit from being at. Hmm. So the party, the party is a experience that happens like through just being a part of the virtual events that we do. And so Tell me a little bit about in building a cohort for Connect the yeah. Dots and, and really being intentional about your long-term vision in terms of monthly cohorts. Yeah. How are you keeping up with just the growth? Uh, just making sure that I, I'm adding new tools and new ways of staying connected, right? It's one thing to say I connect the dots and then everything goes cold until the next event, but being intentional about the outreach, Right. And one thing that I, I appreciate and uh, admire so much about you is just your consistency of your outreach and sharing the message continually um, and touching folks to keep them invigorated and engaged around what's coming and what's next. And so as it pertains to the cohorts um, with connecting the dots, it's just providing resources and access to resources uh, because of there's an understanding of the time we're in, but understanding as a coach, as a professional um, in this environment that, yes, you may not need individual support, but here's a group dynamic and a, like your collective, a team of people who want to see you win. And there's something to be said about going through something with others who they may not necessarily be going through similar or the same types of things you are, but people that have the same mindset around, I want to see someone else win and someone else move forward. And that's what these cohorts are all about. And the monthly connecting the dots environments are going to be all about development, but really creating space for to have intentional connections. Because I, I believe through another organization, another opportunity, this was created unbeknownst to either one of us, right? And so for me, that's what connecting the dots was all about. That's what it was birthed out of that idea that it's not one event, it's not two events, but it's a, a being and a knowing that causes people to want to do work together, but then be excellent in their values, through their values, um, as they make those connections moving forward. One thing that we really share in common, and it's like a very interesting combination of attributes, is yeah. the discipline combined with the non judgment. Mm -hmm. And it's almost the sense of when I see people saying yes to you, and when I say people saying yes to me, there's this common psychographic of individuals who realize that for them to be successful, the consistency is key. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they're so creative and knowing of their values that they are looking for that validation from someone like you or me who has a really strong sense of the path and um that ability for just the previous experience that you've had just being in the military to translate into this any other person out there who's able to recognize how Lawrence is basically embodying all of the skills that he's mastered over the years. And that's been basically why he's been able to 
leave a corporate position and step into his entrepreneurship effortlessly and create a community very rapidly. Yeah. And so if you're thinking about your success and how you've been able to really be a magnet for individuals in the connect the dots tribe, mm-hmm. what would you say is why people say yes to you? I think for the longest period of time, we've all, and I say we all, people have wanted to connect authentically and bring 100% of themselves uh, to any environment that when they hear a message of no judgment, when they hear a message of bring yourself and connect through that person holistically 100% of the time, it awakens a natural happiness, um, if you will, of people like I could do business, I could like my business, I could like the people I work with. Like there's a whole crazy thing that happens and an energy created from that. And again, us being both energy leadership coaches, um, that people just, it just resonates with us because we are communal people. We were always meant to be pack animals. And when somebody sees it, they know it. And as you talk about as me connecting the dots, but as people say yes to you and I, and you're, people lean into your yes. And I'm like, I'm a, I'm a leaner when Julia asks about what is it about what you are providing and what you're pushing in, in the world and not pushing, I mean, you're guiding this thing into the world. Um, the, what is the collective, what is it about it that drives you? I feel like it is often a push because yeah. sometimes it's that extra little nudge where people actually say yes, because people see me around and I'm really often loud. I'm really excitable. I'm really passionate and that can be really scary. And so it's my responsibility to make the ask. It's my responsibility to invite people in. Inclusion is so important for me. And so when I wake up every day, I really want to just give everybody the opportunity. I give everybody that permission to come closer. And um, the quality of conversations that we are able to have, whether it's through the virtual power hours on the collective or the quality conversations that we have privately in the mastermind, it's that consistency for which I'm honoring what matters, which is being a resource and um, also being able to have other people seen in their genius. When everybody shows up and everybody's able to passionately share what they are excited about, Mm -hmm. that inspires everybody else in the room. And so the permission to really share your genius is something that I do a lot of messaging around. That is where our society at large has opportunity. And it's often that creativity and that recognition of the genius combined with the ability to utilize the discipline Mm -hmm. that creates the long-term success. And so for me, I really believe that discipline for passion is um, what kind of shines through in the culture of the higher playbook. Um, For you, Lawrence, when you are just thinking about your everyday and the structure of your everyday and what your structure says about just who you are and what you're building. Walk me through your day right now and tell me exactly why you do the things you do. So, um, you know, in the mornings after I brush my teeth, no. (laughs) So the process of hygiene is in there, just just so you know. Um, But I go through, uh, I actually went back to an old school handwritten journal um, where I pull out my electronic calendar I go through my weekly journal, my daily journal of handwritten notes from previous meetings that I've had during the week, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. And um, as you may know, um, some things fall through the cracks. And that thing was like, oh, I missed something. Somebody's not scheduled. Somebody's not on a calendar. And I do that because, again, if, if excellence is going to be a value for me, how I show up at the beginning of my day, I need to make sure I'm in line mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Um, and so right. What gives me, gets me clear about my calendar and my schedule is the pre-work of meditation, prayer, and reading. 
um, because if my heart's not right, then I'm really not going to work on the right stuff. Um, and when you talk about the discipline of the things that are on my, my calendar and the things that are a part of my schedule, they're there because of discipline, um, that focus time, um, and being called out by my family to spend family time and not to overbook my calendar. Um, and so going through that process and making sure that margin, um, is in my calendar, uh, one for check-in, but also margin to disconnect. Um, in my day, all of that is in my day for a reason. Um, but then the margin for real connection, um, and natural connection. And which is one of the reasons why I appreciate your, um, I believe we're doubling a friendship, um, in the direction of, it's not just business partners, but I believe it's, it's family. It's, it's connection, um, that we're building and making intentional asks for, protecting that time. Um, that's, that's what I build in to mine. What about you? I loved having you just as the first person for the virtual power hour, because that was like, for me, the best way of launching. Cause I already felt this sense of safety, this sense of, mm. wow, like who you are as a human being, mm. it's like so synergistic with who I am. And I mean, I'd love to have you back in the future for another yeah. one, because that was just awesome. But in terms of the, I think the mirror that I see in you and then also something that I know has just been what allows me to be so productive on a weekly basis and so able to follow through on every goal, it comes back to being a disciplined student. Mm -hmm. You were a disciplined soldier. I was a disciplined mm -hmm. student. Mm -hmm. And that ability to occupy my days with time slots and really know, okay, here's where I'm focused on this. Here's where I'm focused on that. Here's where I'm focused on this. You bring in freedom with structure mm -hmm. and that's where it gets really fun and interesting. <laughs> so that's what I teach people. I say you can have structure and you can have freedom. Mm -hmm. so if I'm waking up in the morning and I say, I've got my creative time excessively from when I wake up in the morning until around one o'clock which is literally, I can do whatever I want in that time. I call mm -hmm. it creative time because that means I'm just elevating my energy. All creative time is, is doing things that serve my soul. So if that's walking outside for two and a half hours, I'll take an extended walk and I'll allow for the inspiration to flow. If that's writing, all right. It's just that permission to really have that time to get me into the space of, here's why I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur for the freedom. I'm an entrepreneur for the creativity. Yeah. Once I hit that time of one, I'll shift. And when I tell you my days are blocked, I block myself, not always with paying things. Most mm -hmm. of the time I'm blocking myself with actions that are inspired actions. So nice. if I have an hour of connecting with a group of people who are new connections, who I'm not sure what could result from those connections, but mm -hmm. I'm just feeling that community I feel on purpose. Mm -hmm. Next could be a meeting that's been booked for a few days with a client, one-on-one -on -one time. Now there could be the private mastermind. That happens twice a week. So I often base my weeks around just that consistency. But I then stop at a certain time, like let's say seven o'clock. And at seven o'clock, again, allowing the freedom to just experience the evening. And sometimes I wanna work more and take more mm -hmm. time to just focus on tactical items. And that's the fun part. It's not like a have to. It's more like I'm so passionate that this time just feels like a fun use of time. Yeah. One other thing I want to say in terms of just that balance between creative time and productive time is at the top of the week, I will look at my entire week, whether it's a Sunday or a Monday, and I'll look at what's on my calendar. And if there's open time slots during the times that are productive time, that's what allows for me to know where I want to invest my energy. So if that's inviting a few people to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. I'll focus my energy there. So it's often just looking at your calendar and how full it is. And I'd encourage anyone who's listening right now to yeah. look at your calendar, a few questions to really level up. How bored are you? How yeah. much do you even use your calendar? <laughs> Another question is, are you honoring all of the ingredients of your success formula? 
my success formula that I'm going to share with everybody so that if anybody is listening, you can implement it too. Mm -hmm. People plus power plus passion plus purpose times consistency. So that means those are my human resources, people, the people who inspire me, the people who I inspire, the people who hold me and the people who I have their back to the next part, power. Am I inspired by the expertise of the people around me? Do they have something to say that is interesting? Passion. Am I surrounding myself with people who are really convicted and energized and very much passionate about what they do? They love what they do. Love is a very high value and that love comes through through passion. Purpose. Do people know their why? Are the people who are around me very clear on where they're headed? And then when you times all of those ingredients by the daily showing up, being present, and essentially just being yourself, it's um, what I know has allowed for the relationships to grow and also the experiences to evolve. Yeah. Do you have a success formula? Uh, no, I like yours a lot. My success formula is just get stuff done. Um, and, and are we work? That's why are you working on the right work is, is a thing and everything you just talked about in that success formula, I think it's really, it really comes down to if you're not as disciplined, then you need to make sure you're formalizing something. I've worked in a disciplined environment and I've been able to compartmentalize the right work and did that strategy work so early that it's baked in now to where I am honest enough to where I'll call spades spades. Um, and for me, it's the, uh, my life agreement will, if I had a framework um, around anything where, you know, have I done a task before and asking myself those questions around, okay, what are the situations? Is there purpose, vision, direction around where I'm going? And then just do the will all over again. So what phase am I in? How do I see myself in this phase? And then what else do I need to move forward? And I think everything that you just described in your formula, that human resource, who needs to be involved? Who do I need to connect with? How much time needs to be allotted? All of that is a part of my, my life agreement will. And that agreement is am I going to allow myself to be successful in that moment? And really is all that I, I'm about in connecting the dots and actions over ideas always win all my mantras um, that I wear as a badge of honor. Um, and when you say to somebody, you have that formula, if somebody wanted to work with you, what would be the steps to have them connect with you and then want to work with you, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in another collective? Well, it's definitely the first is the acknowledgement that your fulfillment mm -hmm. is a priority. Yeah. And we're talking fulfillment in business to mm. feel fulfilled by the work that you're doing in the world. And typically the knowingness that happens allows for that person to see the opportunities that are out there. I present a lot of opportunities. So to work with me, if you're, listening to this right now and you literally hear my voice and you're like, I want to have a conversation with this girl, email me at Julia at higher playbook.com. Julia, J U L I A at higher, like the sky playbook, like the sports playbook.com. And tell me what inspired you. Tell me exactly what part of this conversation inspired you and tell me what's inspiring you in your current work and what you want to build and create because ultimately I'm a believer and I'm a champion of dreams. And I know that when we partner together, we can create anything. Lawrence, I want to ask you something and then I want to read something. So okay. here's the thing about building a cohort. I know this mm -hmm. from a lot of experience building cohorts just over the past decade. Anytime you bring a group of people in the room, resonance is everything. And so mm -hmm. if you were to describe the resonance of the individual who is a really strong fit for the connecting the dots cohorts. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the individual who is so set up for success in Connect the Dots. Yeah, that, that individual looks like somebody who you're ready to lean in to a higher thought of you, a vision of you successful, 
but you're now ready to be vulnerable and that you don't necessarily have access to the knowing that it takes to get to that higher level of yourself. And now you're going to show up ready to do work to see and vision what that person looks like. Because the idea around session number one is to frame expectations so that we can have a framework to move forward. And I think that framing of your expectations is so that it's the old adage, how do you eat elephant one bite at a time? Because a lot of times the reason why people don't get from point A to even point B is because they try to wrap their arms around everything in the kitchen sink, the baby in the bath water, they try to do everything all together. And so we're going to frame expectation and we're going to take that journey together. And so somebody who is ready, again, they've, they've still got the little self-talk, but now you want somebody to help you with that and frame some expectations. We're going to link up arms and arms, connect the dots, and we're going to go through this process together. Um, and I got these shoulders wide for a reason because I'm going to, I'm a partner with you through this entire process. Um, and it's, Again, no man, no women left behind. Mm -hmm. We're going to come through together. The thing that came through when you're talking about expectations is something that's pretty blunt, but I'm going to say it because anybody mm -hmm. who's hearing Lawrence right now needs to hear this. What are you not seeing? Sometimes the expectations are really just the blind spots of yeah. the things that you really are holding on to. And if you're experiencing disappointment, if you're experiencing a lack of satisfaction, if you're not making the money you want to make, if you're looking at your life and you're like, you know what? I probably have some expectations. Mm -hmm. That's what Lawrence means when he says looking at expectations. And yeah. we're coaches. We bounce around jargon like this all the time. <laughs> the reality, though, is for those individuals who are just having that moment of recognition, yep. what's the moment of recognition you'd want that person to be at before they say yes to you? Um, that they need help. Simple as that. Um, and to your point, whether it was, I'm not making a type of money, I'm not where I'm at career wise, I'm not at where our relation in the right relationship, whatever that phase is for you that you say, I'm not that you're ready. When you, the acknowledgement of you not being there, because I was a person before I met my first coach ever was I compartmentalized success. And I rationalized what success looked like. And it was a coach who helped me call myself out that I was moving uh, the, the quick read who moved my cheese. I was moving my cheese. And, and it was like, and I called myself out and I was like, man, I've been setting myself up. And I was, I was lowering my expectations. I was lowering my standards, but then I was calling myself, but I was calling myself successful. And I was just like, man, but I couldn't figure out why well, I was calling myself successful, but I was still feeling like I was empty and I was, there was something missing. Well, it was, I was meeting an expectation that it was lowered. That wasn't success. And again, but I was compartmentalizing these things and, and I just was dragging these things along. And so when you talk about the blind spots of people, it was a huge one for me. It was a huge one that I was, that's what I was doing to myself. So uh, I'm excited about this type of work. And if you had to give people who want to work with you, maybe not in the collective, they want to meet with Julia one-on-one, what is meeting with coach Julia one-on-one look like? Just quick, if you could. So my reality is I'm a co-creator. I am a coach, but when I say I'm a co-creator, when people come along who are leaders, who have big dreams, big goals. Mm -hmm. I see myself in the passenger seat. And what happens through conversation is we inspire one another. And through the inspiration that you receive from me, what ends up happening is you take forward action. So I typically like to partner with people who have a specific virtual experience initiative that they are launching. I think that when it comes to being a master virtual facilitator, I really am a person who looks to inspire individuals to fully step into their power in the online world. And so for those who want to partner with me one-on-one, -on -one, it's those of you who recognize the opportunities that exist in 
being a leader virtually. And so if that means what you want to host a social initiative and you want to um, really just up level your leadership virtually, that's one area that I'm really passionate about partnering on. I also will say that um, I'm here as a resource on a more technical level. I think that a lot of the action that people are hesitant to take are the technical things that they don't know how to do. And so in mapping out user experiences and shaping people's programs, I'm deeply passionate about creating programs for others that are in alignment with their values. So that's essentially what I mean with just the expression co-creator and anybody yeah. interested in that capacity can definitely email me and tell me what's inspiring you right now at julia at higherplaybook.com. I want to say this and I want to say this because it's speaking to both of both of the people who resonate with you and the people who resonate with me. It's not even all, it's not even all about receiving help, yeah. about receiving inspiration consistently. Yeah. And if you are realizing that you have a lot of creative ideas, that you have a lot of visionary potential, that you are a great leader, you're exactly who we want to talk to. Yeah. Because the truth of the matter is you carry a lot of other people and you also deserve people to be there with you along the way to support your goals. And so owning that and leaning in is what um, I know I'm here for. And knowing that you've been that sergeant or lieutenant rather in the military, that's who I always see you as, especially when you show up in the groups that I have. And you mm -hmm. always emerge as an individual in the room who <laughs> everybody just refers to you for weeks to come. And I'm just grateful for you, Lawrence. I'm always grateful yeah. for just the way that you inspire new ideas in me. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh the feeling is mutual and I'm excited for when folks get a chance to hear you and connect with you. Just the witnessing of Julia that I get just a testimony of how you've changed them to think in that higher level because they've been connected to other folks in a collective. And just again, the expectation that you have for you and others to have a desire to level up as a result of being in, engaged with each other. So thank you so much for sharing of yourself, your time, your expertise uh, for the Hot Takes podcast. Um, and I know you have some social media handles. Uh, how can people follow, follow you on social media? I know you gave them the email already, but how can they follow you on social media? So two handles, at sign higher playbook and then at sign jewel, J-U-L-E, shine, S-H-I-N-E, Bright, B R I G H C. To end this, you said something earlier. You yeah. said a spade is a spade. And when you said that, I had written a poem. Okay. This poem is speaking to those who are ready to level up. Yeah. Can I read this poem to end this little you, session? You, be, you better go ahead. So this is called Spades. When all is said and done, the things that once were will no longer be. And the things that you thought were real to the eyesight. We're just an illusion all along. Then, all that is left is choice to decide what is your truth and let go of the rest. No point playing in the middle, as the middle ground is where you're sacrificing your higher self. So, to the true champions out there, holding it together for a higher good, it's your time to call it for what it's worth. A spade is a spade. Mic drop. <laughs> and folks, thank you for listening to this episode of Hot Takes. We'll see you next time.